Hi, my name is Brett Sperry. I'm a cardiologist at St. Luke's Mid-America Heart Institute in Kansas City, and I'm happy to be here speaking about ATTR amyloidosis treatments, stabilizers, and silencers. So uh, as, as you may know, there's two types of systemic amyloidosis, and I'll just get into the basics here for a second so that we understand what we're talking about when we say stabilizers and silencers. These are the two main uh, FDA-approved type treatments that we have right now for ATTR amyloidosis. Uh, but first, just to uh, give a background for everyone, there are two main types that uh, affect the heart and that we are, are the most common here. One is AL amyloidosis, which is also called light chain amyloidosis. Um, this is a problem in the bone marrow with overproduce, overproduction of uh, light chains, the small uh, fragments um, of immunoglobulins. And these get overproduced by plasma cells, get released into the system, and then aggregate to form amyloid fibrils, leading to organ dysfunction. ATTR amyloidosis, again, is also uh, called transthyretin amyloidosis. This is from the TTR molecule, this four-leaf clover-looking molecule that you see here, which is four individual monomers that are joined in the center here. And this helps to transport vitamin A or retinol, retinol binding protein, and uh, and thyroid hormone in, a, in our system, and this is a well-preserved protein, um, you know, throughout species. So an important protein, but this can uh, change shape and misfold and deposit into tissue, leading to amyloidosis as well. There are two forms of this: there's the wild type and the hereditary or variant or mutant form, where the uh, the DNA is uh, there's a point mutation here, which leads to a conformational change in the protein that can then uh, be more likely to misfold. And we'll we'll see when we're talking about different treatments um, why that is important there. There's other types of amyloidoses that are more rare, um, but me as a cardiologist uh, and the director of our amyloidosis center here at St. Luke's um, focused mostly on the AL and the ATTR kind. So getting into the, the uh, pathophysiology and the biology here, and again, this is important for uh, when we're talking about drug development, uh, this is the cascade of, of uh, things that occur. So you have uh, your DNA, which is up in the left here. This gets transcribed into messenger RNA and eventually translated into specific proteins. And in this case, the TTR protein, the TTR tetramer comes together and looks like this. Again, we think of it like a four-leaf clover. Um, then when someone develops amyloidosis, uh, that occurs because these individual monomers start to come apart and deposit as amyloid fibrils in various organs. And so, um, again, the genetic type is from a point mutation here in the DNA, which leads to a conformational change. We have different medications that work at different points of this pathway. The first one we'll talk about is stabilizers. These stabilize the TTR protein, the TTR tetramer, at the rate limiting step to uh, avoid this cascade of misfolding and then amyloidogenesis. And then we have silencers that work more upstream in, in the liver cell. This TTR protein is made in the liver to stop either the transcription or translation of the DNA and messenger RNA into the protein. So when we're saying stabilizers and silencers, this is what we're talking about here. And then finally, in the future, there are some drugs that are trying to uh, be developed to look for fibril disruptors. This is when there's fibrils already existing in the organs, like the heart. How do we get rid of these? You know, how do we uh, move towards a cure for this disease to try to break up some of these amyloid proteins and deplete the uh, amyloid stores that are found in the organs? So first, we'll talk about stabilizers, and there's. Uh, there are two that have been tested in uh, large multinational randomized controlled trials. These are named Tefamidus and Acaramidus. Tefamidus was uh, tested in the ATTR ACT trial. This was published in 2018 and led to approval of the medication in 2019 for ATTR with cardiomyopathy. In this trial, there were 441 patients that were randomized and followed for 30 months. Medication worked really well. Um, there was improved survival, improved heart failure health status, six-minute walk distance, and then in all types of patients, they had improvement. Those who were more or less sick, those who were younger, older, men and women, uh, all showed benefit. 
this this was the first trial that was studied uh, really uh, first drug that was studied in ATTR amyloidosis. And so prior to this, patients didn't really have any treatment available. Um, and so uh, there was a, a big improvement in survival here uh, that you'll see as the subsequent generation of drugs and studies come out that we've done a better and better job at reducing this, this gap in, uh, in survival. So I'm going to tell a couple a couple interesting stories in drug development here. Um, I'm not a basic scientist, but I, I find, find this stuff very cool and interesting. So uh, there, there's also a lecture in this series from uh, Jeff Kelly, who probably talked about uh, uh, Tefamidus and how this was developed. But uh, there were many, there were many um, compounds here that were tested to see if they can stabilize the TTR protein uh, and eventually diflunazole was found. This is also called dolabid, and this is commonly used now like in creams, you know, arth arthritic creams for the knees and joints, dolabid cream uh, people use, but this is an NSAID. There is a dolabid uh, diflunazole pill, uh, but this is an NSAID. It has NSAID type side effects and properties. And so tefaminus was eventually developed as a non-NSAID TTR protein stabilizer and uh, they mimic uh, the binding at the thyroxine binding site within the TTR protein. And so you can see how some of these three uh, proteins are, are sort of similar here. So that's how, uh, in summary, how Tefaminus ended up getting developed. Um, the second si stabilizer here is Acaramidus. This uh, was a more contemporary trial than ATTR Act with Tefaminus. There were healthier patients included in this study. Um, and patients were also were most commonly diagnosed non-invasively with imaging. Back in the early generation in the Tefamidus ATTRX study, everyone in that study needed a heart biopsy to get into that study, which is a pretty high bar. Now we can diagnose patients a lot earlier with imaging, uh, and so it uh, lends itself to diagnosing uh, patients earlier and having less sick patients to enroll in clinical trials. So this is a more contemporary cohort, 632 patients, again, followed for 30 months. And then the, again, there were improvements here in the endpoint of survival, frequency of CV hospitalization, six-minute walk distance, and change in NT pro BNP. Again, all types of patients showed improvement. Um, and there's expected uh, FD approval of this medication late in 2024 for ATTR with cardiomyopathy. And then the second cool story in drug development here is how this medicine came about. And this came about because of a super stabilizing variant that was found in this condition called T119M. And it was found to be protective in patients who uh, should have otherwise gotten ATTR amyloidosis, like if they had this V30M gene mutation, which is a very bad mutation to have where uh, most patients end up developing either a severe neuropathy or cardiomyopathy in their early to middle years. Well, if you had this T119M mutation, then you you didn't really get the, the problems. And so this was a super stabilizing mutation. Um, and so this medication, Acaramidus, which was originally called AG10, was developed to mimic the structural changes that occur in the TCR protein with these T119M mutations. So those are the stabilizers. Uh, now we're going to talk about the gene silencers. And the two that are, um, that are mainly used now and on the market, these work on the messenger RNA level to block the messenger RNA from getting translated and turning into the protein. And this is done in two fashions. One is a small interfering uh, RNA and one is an antisense oligonucleotide. And basically they do similar type things with different mechanisms in order to block protein expression. Uh, and the medications that we have available for this, for the siRNA, we have patisiran, which was uh, really the uh, second generation, I guess, medication and vutriciran, which is a, a newer generation. We'll talk more about this in the coming slides. And then we have inotersin, which is the older generation, and eplontersin, which is a newer generation of this antisense oligonucleotide. So uh, talking a little bit more about the silencers, eplontersin and vutricerin, again, currently uh, approved for polyneuro polyneuropathy with ATTR. Um, and these uh, it's approved this way because this is how it was tested first. There are cardiomyopathy trials ongoing, including the Helios B trial, which um, 
which uh, read out at the ESC European Society of Cardiology meeting uh, in 2024 in cardiomyopathy. And so, um, but at, as of this moment, they're both approved for polyneuropathy and you have to take these medications with vitamin A because um, as I spoke about earlier, TTR is uh, a transporter for vitamin A. And so if you reduce the level of this protein in your body, uh, then there, in theory, could be a reduction in vitamin A transport to tissues. And so you want to take extra supplementation of vitamin A uh, on a daily basis at the recommended uh, daily units. So Helios B was uh, the trial here that we're talking about um, in uh, ATTRCM. This is a contemporary trial of healthier patients. Um, in, then in both the ATCR Act and Attribute CM trials, there were 655 patients uh, randomized in this trial, followed for 36 months, and it showed a lower risk of death in CV events compared with placebo, and it lowered the decline in six-minute walk distance and in KCCQ. Um, and so this is a, a, a real uh, win for patients here with the silencers um, showing positive data for ATTR CM. And then the the um, other silencer here, Eplontersin, this is being tested in the CardioTransform trial in cardiomyopathy, and this is ongoing with results expected uh, in 2025. So to summarize the current generations of treatments, again, we have uh, stabilizers, which is tefamidus, 61 milligram. This is a oral capsule uh, once per day. Then you have acaramidus, which is 800 milligrams twice per day medication, and then a silencer, which is the two silencers, Eplontersin, 45 milligram subcutaneous injection once a month. This is self-administered, so the patient gives this to themselves at home. And then the Vutriceren we talked about is 25 milligram subcutaneous injection once every three months. And this uh, should say in a healthcare facility, um, it's given by a healthcare provider. So in the last couple of minutes here, I'll talk about some investigational treatments for ATTR, cardiac amyloidosis, uh, on top of stabilizers and, si and silencers. And uh, the, the first are medications to remove amyloid. Again, we call these depleters. And there's uh, AT02, there's ALXN2220, and NNC6019. These are infusion medications um, uh, that are given uh, given monthly or, or uh, more frequently than that in order to uh, try to remove amyloid from the the organs, really from from any area of the body. <clears throat> so these are ongoing in clinical trials right now, or soon to be ongoing. And then you have another uh, medication called NTLA two thousand one, and this is uh, this works at the transcription level. To this is a CRISPR Cas nine medication to uh, one one time lifetime treatment here to really remove the area where the TTR gene is getting, uh, is in the liver cells, and then put the two ends back together to create uh, a, a missense area so that this messenger RNA doesn't even get uh, made in the first place. And again, this is NTLA 2001. This is also in clinical trial. Um, and here's just my last slide looking at an overview of the, the current and future uh, trials that are ongoing in ATTR-CM. Again, the, this NTLA is a, a CRISPR-Cas9 gene editing uh, medication. This is a phase three trial. And again, it's a, a single lifetime infusion for people to really knock down their uh, production of the protein by 90% uh, or more. Uh, there's maybe a future trial next year on uh, an even newer version of the uh, the small interfering RNAs. Uh, this one is ALN TTR SC04, and uh, this it could be even be given every six months or even every twelve months, depending upon how things go. And a phase three trial um, is being considered for next year. <clears throat> Viral depleters. Uh, we mentioned these two of the. Uh, these are all going to be in phase three trials in various stages of completion. These are these all just started, and then we have a prevention trial as well that's starting here with acaramidus. This is expected late in 2024. A phase four trial that should enroll patients who <clears throat> have the genetic predisposition for amyloidosis with uh, one of these gene mutations. Uh, and they're close to the age where they may be developing the cardiac disease or the neuropathy disease, but they don't yet have 
the clinical manifestations of disease. And this would be using acuraminus to prevent uh, disease from occurring in the organs in the first place. And so really exciting time in amyloidosis. We have stabilizers and silencers, which are the FDA approved medications right now, but we have more uh, in that in that world, as well as the future world of removing amyloid from the organs coming up here, as well as prevention. And so uh, that's all I had. Thank you again for having me. And uh, hopefully you could learn something from this. Thanks.